Hello, this is Dr. J back with some more Let's Play Planet X 16. Next up is the final map, Big Islands, and we have been cutting such a swath through these maps ever since the first one, which gave us some trouble. But since then, we've been kicking so much butt that I'm going to go ahead and do something I don't do all that often. I'm going to increase the difficulty to hard. Now, maybe we'll get utterly wrecked and face rolled, and if so, we'll drop it back down to normal and complete the final map and with that clear the game but you know maybe we'll uh maybe we'll get a win on hard mode and we can feel good about ourselves let's find out we've certainly been wrecking enough face that i think that we might be able to win on hard mode get out of the way worthless trash let me at the beautiful crystals Any more crystals? One down here. There were so much extra minerals, it's worth going a little out of your way for them, I think. Alright, while you're handling that, you will set up power for us. Whoa, that became confusing. Okay. We got there in the end. And we're going to need to find the geysers. Looks like we're in the northwest corner of the map. Where are the geysers? <clears throat> okay, there's some here and some over here. We're going to want to build it both. Make sure that we have enough resources for solar panels as well, of course. Which means get over there and build some right now. Okay, stop derping out. Good lord, they cannot handle the smelter geometry. Okay, yeah, good thing that we stopped where we did or we wouldn't have been able to build any solar panels. I'm guessing that's hard mode, is making us start with less resources. Here's a protoid base under construction. Oh, there are two protoids on hard mode. Okay. So my hypothesis that maybe you couldn't fight two at a time because it would be too taxing on the system resources was wrong. We are going to be fighting two enemies at once. And we had fewer resources to start, it appears. So that's going to make things real interesting. This may be an appropriate challenge for the final map of Planet X-16. Gonna take a lot longer to get all our solar panels set up, given that we started with such fewer resources. Just everything in general is going to take a lot longer to get set up. Hopefully the river slows them down a bit. Or canal or whatever it is. Okay, I wasn't crazy. There is animated water. On some of the maps it's been animated and on others it hasn't been. Okay, it looks like the shallow water is not animated and the deep water is. I guess that's the difference then. A mystery solved. Yep, we'll see how this goes. Against two enemy protoids. Oof, this is a much slower start on hard mode, that's for sure. Pretty big difficulty increase. But, like I said, an appropriate challenge for our last map of our Planet X-16 experience. The strategies that worked for us on normal might not work on hard. I may have to 
do more of a balance between defenses and economy, but we'll see. I'm going to go for a heavy economic opening again in the hopes that I can get away with it. But we'll see. Yeah, I kind of figured. Oh man, he got stuck. That sucks. God dang it. That's legit a little bit frustrating how it happened that time. I didn't even realize that this little tile was here to make him get stuck on. Oh well. Life goes on. Oh no, I hope this guy doesn't get stuck too. Please make your way out. Okay, good. That truly would have sucked. Yeah, it looks like it doesn't deduct it until you place until you place it. I thought I had read in the manual that it deducts it as soon as you select it out of the UI, but maybe I remembered wrong on that. Okay, resources are finally coming in. We're gonna want more power. And we're gonna want more refineries down here. All right, well, let's build a replacement builder since our one idiot got himself stuck. So we're going to have, oops, wrong one again. Seven refineries total, and it looks like we're going to have to make do with that. So, yeah, we're, we're just going to have to hope that's enough. Alright, now we need some factories. Let's see. Where is the enemy going to be striking us from? I'm not sure exactly. I'll try building my factories here-ish, I guess. We may have to juggle some offense and defense this time, because presumably the one enemy base will be attacking us. Or, so we're fighting two enemy bases, and presumably while we're destroying one, the other one will be attacking us. So we're not going to be able to afford to just send all of our forces to attack one guy and leave no reserves behind, or our base might get destroyed while we're doing that. Definitely a good thing that I have this uh, second power farm under construction, because as usual, power is being an issue. Okay. And then we're going to make a third one at some point. But before that, I think we're going to want defenders. Which means I might actually build some light tanks because they're quicker. Just so if the enemy doesn't attack from an angle I'm expecting, the lights can get there in a relative hurry to deal with it. Yeah, we need a third power farm and we kind of can't wait. We need it basically now. Power is just such a perennial issue until you have three power farms going. They're already coming for us, okay. Yeah, they're going to be attacking here and here, I think. And we're just really going to need a rapid reaction force to deal with it. And that means speed. Oh, they are coming quick. They did not really wait very long before launching their assault. Well, I mean they waited kind of long, but... Considering how few resources we started with, it was tough to get built up like we needed to. Well, hard mode's gotta live up to its name, right? Oh, they are getting that bridge built real quick. The other force doesn't seem to be being as aggressive. 
We're gonna have to check on the mineral situation as well. They are just about ready. There are some trees in the way which are slowing them down, so that's good. We're gonna want more factories for sure. And okay, this is just gonna be a force to respond quickly and slow the enemy down while we wait for the real reinforcements to show up and that's gonna be the heavies. <clears throat> okay, the rest of this stuff is kind of garbage, but you know, it's worth some minerals. Oh, jeez Louise, dude, come on. Do not do this to me while I'm about to be under attack. Okay, that'll do for now. Get another factory going. Okay, it's gonna take them a while, but once they bust through, it's a pretty substantial force. These guys are definitely taking longer. So I guess the two enemy forces aren't equally aggressive. That's fortunate for us. Whoa, 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 whoa! Where, how did that guy get across? What the heck? How did that happen? He somehow got ahead of the rest of the force. Like an advanced scout or something. Where the heck are the rest of you? I sent like five guys down here. There we go. I need a radar. I never built one. That is not a builder. Here we go. Oh, minerals are a serious problem. We're down to 90. Yikes. Smelter, you are processing this stuff, right? Okay, yeah, it is. They are en route. Won't be long before we meet them in battle. Yeah, minerals are the problem here. That's really unusual. Okay, these guys are swarming, but they are not building the bridge yet, but I'm sure it won't be long. Oof. This is gonna be rough. We'll see if we can pull it off. Yeah, minerals are just a huge issue all of a sudden. Is there anywhere else that I can get minerals, or is this it? Is this the only patch we've got? Looks like it's the only patch we've got over here. Yikes, okay. Well... Trash is all that's left, so trash is what we're going to have to drop off. Not ideal, but beggars can't be choosers. Battle is going to be breaking out to the southeast real soon here. There, that'll have to do, as inadequate as it is. Let's uh, move the lights back. They're a little hard to distinguish from the heavies when they're all in a tight cluster like that. Ugh, minerals. I'm not used to minerals being the... the bottleneck.
That's just taking so long to process something. These guys still swarming, but still not building a bridge, so it's okay. Okay, they're kind of trying to break through up here. Okay. I think we're handling it. Alright. I think the mediums can deal with it. These are the lights, right? So I'm going to send the lights kind of back up here. They're my rapid reaction force, just okay, right. Those guys are starting on their bridge now. Ugh, I'm gonna have to fight a two-front war. Let's try to take out the southern base as quickly as we possibly can, so that we don't have to deal with both of them at once. Fortunately, they have kindly created a path for us. Wonder what the heck they thought they were doing building that bridge, maybe trying to get around these trees. Okay. Um. Hmm. Oh, they are building that quick. I wonder if I should build some sentry turrets to set up on the shore there. Whoa, guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. We can't have this confusion. Come on, you can do it. Go like this, and then down here. Oh, there is so much chaos going on. Guys, 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 guys. It's like herding cats. Oh, they are building that real fast. These guys might not get there in time. Where's my rapid reaction force? Where'd I put it? I thought it was here. Oh crap, I lost track of it. That's not good. There it is. Okay, I had them closer to the shore. I need them here to slow these guys down. Oh my god, they've broken through. Okay, where are my turrets? Oh boy, we have a big problem. We have a real big problem. Oh, the turrets are getting lost. They're, they're not going to make it. They're too confused. That's not good. That is not good. Oh boy, they got totally confused. Um, Oof, having to fight a two-front war makes this way the heck harder. Guys, 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 guys. Oh, this is a disaster. I... I couldn't count on them to make it over there. That was just asking too much. The enemy broke through. Okay, I think we've lost. Probably. Unless we can fight these guys off, but... I don't think I can count on my guys to get over there, is the issue. No, we're, we're definitely good. Alright. Okay, we failed. We failed. I accept that. We're gonna do this again on normal mode. Um... Maybe I'll come back later and do this on hard mode, but it is clearly a much greater challenge. It's not like slightly harder, it's enormously harder. And probably requires different strategy than what was working for me on normal. So maybe we'll come back and do this again on hard later, but for now we're gonna wrap up the playthrough for the time being with, uh, with doing this one on normal mode. Oh man, that was all kinds of rough. That is way more difficult. I kind of got pretty screwed over by the pathfinding too. If my guys were better at finding their way to the battlefront, I might have been able to hold that off, but 
It just wasn't happening. But, you know, you have to accept that as part of the limitations. As I said multiple times, the fact that this is a real-time strategy game that works at all on the hardware is a marvel. But yeah, minerals are an issue on this map too. The combination of that and having to fight two enemies at once was pretty brutal. Well, I got put in my place. If I was feeling cocky about how well I was doing, I have been taught that there is a much greater challenge for me whenever I choose to tackle it. Missed. This is very poorly placed, this tile. It's going to make it real easy for this guy to get stuck trying to build these refineries. Wow, minerals continuing to be a problem. Jeez, how many minerals does a solar panel cost, anyway? Jeez, a huge number, apparently. What? I still have insufficient? Just how many are these things? 40! Wow, I never realized they were so expensive. Maybe it's not just hard mode. Maybe this map actually just starts you off with a lot less resources. Kind of seems like it. Yeah, I guess I got double whammied. The final map is more challenging by virtue of giving you less resources, it appears. And then hard mode has you fighting against two separate enemies. He's gonna get stuck again, isn't he? After he builds this, he's gonna end up here. He's not gonna be able to make it out. This tile needs to be moved. <laughs> this is not a good place for it. I knew it! Ugh! Irritating. Alright, go down here and build these refineries. So judging from their behavior in our failed attempt, they're going to try to cross the water at this beach here. Just kind of taking the most direct path to our base. Alright, now we need more energy. Definitely seems that we have more resources in normal mode, though, even accounting for the mineral problem. I think so. Alright, the power station's not done. Well, while we wait, you might as well get the third one going, because we know that we're going to want three. Three of these little power farms. Minerals are skyrocketing now. Maybe it was just processing a, a low-value piece of ore first, and now it's processing all the crystals. Seems like building clockwise around this works a little better. Whereas, for whatever reason, my natural inclination is to build counterclockwise.
Okay. I should mostly take care of our resource issues except for minerals, which again, do seem to be a bigger problem on this map. We'll deal with that when the time comes, which... Well, I mean, honestly, the time is basically now. We need our resources to be in a good place. Replace the one builder who got stuck. Okay. So I'm going to build my factories right across the water from these jokers. Can you make it? No, he can't make it. He needs help. Now can you make it? Might as well build a second smelter just so we get the minerals coming in faster. Might as well grab this one. Alright, low value stuff, but it'll have to do. Now. Should be right across the water from these guys. Yep. Alright. So let's start building our factories here. And radar. Okay, hopefully that'll do. Again, if the enemy base isn't close to a corner where it's relatively easy to figure out the offset, although even then, it can mess it up. I don't think I'm going to try a missile. There's just no way that I would be able to count the number of spaces accurately from that far away from the corner. Or from the edge. Hopefully this will be an adequate amount of minerals, despite the scarcity of crystals. Okay, let's crank out those heavies. Yeah, having to hold off the protoids on two fronts is enormously more difficult. So I'll have to think about what might be a good strategy to deal with that. I guess I would just have to split my forces, huh? If I had split my forces in half from the start, I might have been able to hold them back on both fronts. Well, they're building their bridges. Luckily, we have a force being built to greet them in the manner that is customary of our people. With screaming hot death. Gas is the bottleneck now. Seven Geysers is going to have trouble keeping up 
minerals and energy are doing okay at this point. Get our defensive line going. I should maybe let them finish manufacturing the bridges though, so I can use them against them. Yeah, and you go ahead and finish your bridges. Then I won't have to build any. Yeah, gas is the limiting factor. I think maybe I only have enough to support three factories rather than four, but... They are almost across, and they move pretty quick. A lot faster than the heavies, so... We kind of have to already be where they want to be. Can't really move to intercept them. try to build another bridge to kind of meet theirs, but my builder will likely just get destroyed by the guys building the bridges. A well-armed engineering corps, these protoids. Oh geez, they're building three of them. They've got quite a wide front going on. Back off a little. Let them finish it. Let them finish it. I might not want to let them finish this one, though, because that is getting to be a wide front to defend. Okay, well, we're holding them off just fine. Even on normal mode, this map is definitely more challenging than the previous ones, fitting for the final map of the game. Insufficient nascene gas. There we go. We're just about at the point where we might have a large enough force to start pressing forward. I think we need, what, 90? Yep, 90. Okay. Let's go. Thanks for the bridge, lads. Your help is appreciated.
Our heavies outrange their tanks. Alright, big fight begins. Fight to secure the shoreline. They have pretty significant forces, so it's not an easy take. We have a lot of guys struggling here. This is no good. We need we need them to get across. This is like the bulk of our force. Accidentally selected all of them. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, good, 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 good. Progress is being made. How are you guys holding them off? Adequately. The smart ones made it across first, and now they need to wait for all the derp faces to catch up. Derpy or not, they're all effective gunners. We need them all in the fight. Oh, I've got three more being manufactured. Let's get a fourth. Okay, we've got a full force. Pretty much a full company of tanks or even more. A reinforced company, perhaps. So we'll move down here and hit them from the west, I think. Is it just me, or are there little treads animated? Maybe not, maybe it's an optical illusion. It's hard to tell. No, I don't think they are, after all. It almost looked like they were. That would have been pretty sweet. Get another batch building. Here goes, the big assault. I think these guys can probably pull it off. In the past, a full group of heavies has been able to take the enemy base. Just deal with the turrets. It's probably going to want to take out the factory. I don't want them churning out tanks. Okay, and victory to us. Nice. Okay. So that's Planet X 16 cleared on normal mode. Uh, we also learned that hard mode is indeed significantly harder and that it is a two-on-one. I may go back and record some videos of me prevailing in hard mode, uh, or I might not. Uh, we'll see. That's, uh, that's to be determined in the future. At least for the time being, the playthrough is complete. So I guess I can do a quick review. Uh, this game is, it is pretty fantastic. It's a lot of fun, especially since yeah, I got through that really quick, but obviously if I play on hard mode, there's still a lot of content left to go. It'll clearly be longer and more difficult to do all the maps again on hard. So although I got through normal very quickly, hard will provide more content. It has all of the basic features of a real-time strategy game running on what is roughly equivalent to Commodore 64 hardware. Or, you know, right now an emulation thereof, but... It also runs on the real Commander X-16, which again is approximately about like a Commodore 64. And that is a dang impressive achievement, a very fine achievement. So hats off to David Murray, to 8-Bit Guy, for programming a real-time strategy game for 1980s style hardware in assembly. That is 
that is quite an impressive accomplishment. Uh, in terms of comparing it to Planet X3, it is closer to being a proper real-time strategy game because you can actually control multiple units at a time, you have a smoother scrolling map, you have mouse control, you have units that can act more autonomously. So it is definitely closer to being an actual full-fledged RTS. In fact, it's just about there. If you were to add maybe one or two little conveniences like being able to band select units, you'd pretty much be fully there. And that's real impressive. That said, it's not better than Planet X3 in every way. Uh, for example, Planet X3 had a more varied soundtrack. The one track we get, or I guess two, the title track and then the in-game track, in Planet X16 are both very good, and they sound higher fidelity, but there's only two of them, and I would have appreciated listening to a wider variety of music tracks in, in the levels, rather than just the same one every time, as good as it was. Um, there's also more variety in the tile sets in Planet X3, where in addition to the Temperate and the Inferno that we saw here, there's also a Winter tile set, and we had more variety in actually using those tile sets in the maps. Like this one, it's the green tile set every single time, except for the lone Inferno map. So it really kind of feels like the Inferno tile set was underutilized. Um, so yeah, in terms of the variability of the terrain, Planet X3 was better. It also felt like Planet X3 was maybe better in terms of the different attack strategies that I felt compelled to use. Because in Planet X3, sometimes I would go for a quick rush using the light tanks and the kamikaze attack to blow up an enemy base real quick before it gets going. Or even to assault an enemy base that's already up, because the kamikaze attack the light tanks are durable enough that you can often pull it off before they get destroyed. Here, I can kind of understand if the thinking was that the self-destruct attack was too overpowered in X3, because it probably was, but it's been gimped so much in X16, it no longer feels like a very viable tactic. And maybe that's just because I need to get better at using it. That might very well be the case. But the times I tried to use it, it just failed miserably every time, so it didn't really feel like a very good tactic to try to do that. The missiles were a lot easier to use in X3 because you can actually get the coordinates of things on the map to fire them more accurately. It's a lot harder to fire them accurately in this game. Uh, so using self-destructing light tanks, firing missiles, and then the third tactic that I liked to use in X3 was leapfrogging the heavy tanks, which were kind of like the heavy tanks and the sentry tanks combined in X-16. And that was a good heavy base assault tactic for when I didn't want to use the missiles and the base was already too heavily defended for the light tank kamikaze attack to likely be viable. So basically three go-to strategies. In X-16, I basically found one strategy that worked well, the giant heavy tank rush, and then just used that every time because everything else I tried just kind of failed. So it did feel like there were more viable strategies in X-3, but that could be because I haven't gotten good enough at X-16 yet. And maybe if I practice hard mode, I'll learn some other alternative strategies and get better at them. So it's possible that X-16 also has good variability in uh, tactics to use, and I just need to play the game more. That's entirely possible. But at least my initial impression is that X3 might have provided the better tactical uh, variants. Again, all of that said, none of that is to really meant to dig Planet X16, because this game is darn good. And like I said, it's more sophisticated than X3, and closer to really fully embracing the RTS genre. And either way, I've had a lot of fun playing through these nine maps. It's been pretty great. So a huge thank you to 8BitGuy for giving me this pre-release version of the game to play. I really appreciate that. I had a lot of fun playing it. Be proud of what you've created. It's pretty awesome. I'm going to see if I can make any game that is even close to this good for the Commander X16. But unfortunately, 
My day job keeps me very busy, so it's up in the air whether I would really be able to finish anything or not. But I'm going to try my best, and who knows, maybe I'll be able to finish something pretty cool for the hardware that 8-Bit Guy made. And that would that would be pretty darn sweet, because making, making a game to run on some legit old-school hardware that's like an 8 megahertz processor and 512 kilobytes of RAM, that'd be pretty sweet. And that would kind of check off one of one of my life goals. So we'll see if that if that comes to fruition. Anyway, this has been Planet X X16. I've had fun playing this. Hopefully you've had fun watching it. This completes the playthrough for the time being at least. This is Dr. J signing off and hopefully I'll see you for whatever I decide to LP next. Goodbye for now.